I find a lot of people under revise this, but there is some overlap between organic chemistry and the bonding topic when it comes to bond angles. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is take you through this monstrosity of a molecule, looking at all the different functional groups that you encounter in A-level organic chemistry, and we're going to be discussing about how you can estimate the shape and the bond angle surrounding the central atom in each one of these functional groups. Then at the end of the tutorial, stay tuned because I'm going to show you how this has come up previously on some OCR exam questions. Starting off here in the middle of the molecule and we can see we have a carbon atom surrounded by four bond pairs. They're all sigma bonds really, aren't they? Now here what we can see is the very familiar tetrahedral. And so this isn't any different really from when we look at say methane in the bonding topic. This is still going to be estimated as 109.5 degrees and that's the tetrahedral shape, don't forget. Moving up and we're looking at a carbon in an alkene functional group. Now here this carbon atom is surrounded by three electron regions and that's going to be two single bonds and that one double bond. Here we estimate the bond angle to be 120 degrees because the shape here is trigonal planar and we do actually see this in a wide range of functional groups in A-level chemistry. We're actually also going to see this surrounding a carbon atom in a carboxylic acid group, in that ester group, in the acyl chloride, even in the amide, when you've got the carbonyl group on an aldehyde or ketone as well. So the C double bond O, with that carbon then bonded out to two other groups, or the carbon in a C double bond C, with the carbon then bonded to two other groups, is going to be estimated as that trigonal planar shape, which is 120 degrees. Moving over, and we're going to look at this amine group. Now this would be the same thing we would estimate as well for an amide, and it's very reminiscent of ammonia. So that nitrogen atom in three covalent bonds and still having that lone pair means I've got the nitrogen atom surrounded by four electron pair regions, which is a combination of the three bond pairs and the one lone pair, causing for that bond angle to be estimated as 107 degrees, and that is pyramidal. Moving over, and we're trying to see some similarity here with a molecule of water because in these two separate sections of the structure, you can see we've got the OH alcohol group and we've got that bonding around the ester group as well. Now in both of these scenarios, we have an oxygen surrounded by two bond pairs and two lone pairs. And so just like with water, what we're gonna see here is 104.5 degrees as the angle, that's our non-linear shape. Finally here, moving down to the bottom of the molecule, and I've got the nitrile functional group. This is very reminiscent of looking at CO2 when you're studying the bonding topic. Because here, if we look at the carbon atom, there's a bit of a giveaway with how this is drawn in both the displayed formula and when we draw this in skeletal. This is absolutely going to be a linear bond shape, and around that carbon atom in the nitrile functional group, we're going to have a bond angle of 180 degrees. So how and where has this come up in exams? Well, along with intermolecular forces, predicting bond angles in organic molecules isn't actually that rare. And these three exam questions give a good impression of what you can expect to see. Give these a quick screenshot, and if you want a deeper explanation of the one on the left, then why not check out this walkthrough of the 2020 Unified Chemistry exam, that's paper three, which is where I got this from. Or what about reviewing all the module four organic reactions? Either way, there's links on screen now and down below, which will all help with your revision. And until next time, happy revising.